everybody. I am once again happy that you chose to join us for our Bible study. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us the word. We ask, Father, as we study your word, that you would help us to slow down and absorb your word and get it into the fiber of our beings. Father, we thank you for its beauty. We thank you for its truth. And we thank you, Father, for moving on us to be at this time, in this place, wherever we are. In Jesus' name, amen. So we are continuing on article number 13, a gospel church. And our author writes, we believe that a visible church of Christ is a congregation of baptized believers associated by covenant in the faith and fellowship of the gospel, observing the ordinances of Christ governed by his laws and exercising the gifts, rights, and privileges invested in them by his word, that its only scriptural officers are bishops, pastors, and deacons whose qualifications, claims, and duties are defined in the epistle to Timothy and Titus. And our scripture for today uh, continues to be 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 13. And uh, once again, I will be reading the NIV version. So 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 1 through 13, says, Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother, Suthanus, to the church of God in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy together with all those everywhere, who called on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours, grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way, in all your speaking and in all your knowledge, because our testimony about Christ was confirmed in you. Therefore, you do not lack any spiritual gift as you eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to be revealed. He will keep you strong to the end so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God, who has called you into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, is faithful. I appeal to you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no division among you and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. My brothers, some from Chloe's household, have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow Christ. Is Christ divided? Was Paul crucified for you? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? And so, our lesson, or our last lesson, consists of the background of the letter to the church of Corinth. They were severely divided, and morality was at its lowest point. Paul faced a lot of challenges when he first arrived in, in Corinth. But he was able to establish some relationships with people and Paul would witness to anyone who would listen. And eventually the gospel began to take root and a few people here and there placed their faith in Christ and the church of God in Corinth was born. <coughs> Excuse me. The culture in which this church existed was similar to our culture, if not worse, and I say that loosely, basically anything and everything was okay, and that included sex in the church. So coming out of that kind of culture, the people of the church at, Cor at Corinth 
still had some of that thought process in mind and they rationalized much of the stuff that was going on. And, and so to sum it up, we said that the Corinthians church or the church at Corinth was a hot mess. Paul is writing this letter to bring the church back together as one body in Christ. The folk in the church were fighting and arguing and forming cliques. Uh, sound like us, huh? They were severely divided and morality was low. So in writing this letter, Paul had to choose his words carefully to reach the hearts of the reader. Verse 1 says, Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Suthanus. Now, one of the things I point out, too, is as, as I'm reading and as you're reading uh, the verses in, Corinth, in uh, 1 Corinthians, notice how many times Paul uses the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ Jesus or Jesus just just kind of notice that for now. Uh, but right now, verse 1, Paul called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and our brother Suthanus. So that's the heading of the letter, the beginning of the letter. Letter writing in our day has become a lost art. I mean, when is the last time you received an actual letter from someone? I mean, one that the mail carrier, the mailman, the mailwoman actually brought and put in your mailbox. If it's done at all, it's an exception and it's not the rule. Nowadays, we have emails and text messages. We have Zoom calls and and, and all these different things, duo and all these things that we have. And, and so I wonder if letter writing is even taught in school anymore. But back in the day when we were actually taught, and, and that's all we had to communicate was the phone and we had letters. And the phones, the you know, they were long distance calls back then. They were too expensive, so we would write letters. And you remember, you know, we were taught to start a letter with a salutation. You remember that, dear Jane, how are you? Fine, I hope. And, and then we may say something, while well, sitting down thinking about you, you know, that kind of thing, or, or something to that effect. And then at the end of the letter, we would end with a closing signature, something like yours truly, then we'll sign our name. But in biblical times, the format was flipped. Uh, the letter started with who it was from. And, and then it, it, uh, after who it was from, then it was who it was to. And, and such is Paul's letter to the Corinthians church. Uh, Paul starts off by stating his credentials. Uh, given by God, given to him by God. He, he was an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God. He was called by God to do the work that he was doing. He, he was setting the record straight on the front end because some in the church were doubting his calling. He, he was appointed by God to be a messenger to carry the gospel of Christ to the world. Then he says, and our brother Susanus, Suthanus, or Sustanus. So Paul is saying, even though I'm a messenger called by God, I am also called to be a brother to other believers. He says, our brother Sustanus, or Susanus, however you want to pronounce it meaning that they are brothers in Christ along with all the other believers. He is called by God, but his call does not make him better than or superior to other believers. He's a brother. His call and office uh, 
as a messenger of God is to be acknowledged and it is to be respected, but it does not make him superior, uh, a, a superior person. He is a brother to all other believers. Now, keep in mind that Paul's goal is to unify the church. His reasoning, reason for writing 1 Corinthians is to unify the church, not to add to his dissension. Now, can you imagine how this letter would have gone over if Paul had started out by addressing himself as Reverend Dr. Paul and, and laid out all of his worldly credentials? Now, don't get me wrong. He had them. He had worldly credentials. He probably had what was what was equivalent to our doctor, doctorate. Uh, but he didn't put a high value on them. He didn't use his credentials to make folk think highly of him. You know, he didn't walk around saying, I'm Reverend Dr. Paul and, and everybody's supposed to say, oh, hey, Reverend Dr. Paul. And, you know, he didn't do all that. He didn't want folk to think more highly of him than he was. L listen to Paul in, in Philippians, the third chapter, starting with verse four, and this is the New King James Version. He says, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews concerning the law, a Pharisee concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is of the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, these I counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. So not only was Paul an expert in the Jewish law, but Paul's credentials, a tribe of Benjamin. Benjamin was the only tribe that didn't really pull out. Uh, you know, they remained faithful to, to, to Judaism the whole time. A Hebrew of Hebrews. He, he said he was of the good stock of, of Israel. The good stock. He was a Pharisee. He, he, was, he had zeal. He had a, a, a righteousness that he thought he had. So, but not only was Paul an expert in Jewish law, but he sat under one of the greatest teachers in the ancient world, who was Gamaliel. Paul knew the law and was at the top of the Jewish religious system. And if he wasn't at the top, he was very close to it before God knocked him down on the ground. For all of Paul's great Jewish pedigree, he counted it as poop or dung compared to knowing Christ. He says it's worth nothing. You know, this is kind of gross, but nobody stores poop. And he says he counted it as poop, as dung. When when making the comparison to knowing Christ, he didn't use his credentials to exalt himself. The few times he did use them, it, it was only to make a point, not of superiority, but of humility. After stating who the letter is from, in verse 2, he states who the letter is to. He says, to the church of God in Corinth to those sanctified in Christ Jesus and called to be holy, together with all those everywhere who call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. And so note, he says, to the church of God in Corinth. And, and so Paul here is choosing his words carefully and on purpose. Remember, you know, throughout all these lessons, remember his purpose in writing this letter. His purpose is to bring unity in the church. He says to the church of God, not to the Corinthian church. There's a big distinction there. 
that I think uh, is purposely pointed out. He's pointing out that the church in Corinth belonged to God, not to the people, nor to any man or to any particular group. It is to it is the church of God, which is at Corinth. It's it's it is God's church that happens to be in the city of Corinth. I don't know about you. I don't know if you got that or if it went over your head, but he's saying the local church in any city, any state, any nation, any era belongs to God. Just as God used Paul, the apostle Paul, during biblical days to establish churches, God uses people in our day and time to do the same thing. But that does not mean that the church belonged to that person. Acts 20 and 28, the NIV says, keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. So the church has been bought with the blood of Christ. And nowhere does it say that he handed it over to any mere man, to any mere woman, to any group of people. Woe to the man or woman or group who thinks that they own the church, who acts as though the church exists to do their will. That's a bad place to be because God will not share his glory. The church is God's and God's alone. Then Paul says, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy. And, and the King James Version says, called to be saints. Again, and I'll keep reminding us that the purpose of the letter is to bring unity in the church. And, and Paul says he calls them saints, and he, and he says he calls the, that they are sanctified. The word sanctified means to be set apart or separated. God's church is to be set apart, to be separated unto him for his purpose. And, and, and there are stages in sanctification. When a person first believes in Jesus Christ, that person is immediately set apart for God. It, it, it's a permanent set apart. It, it, it's a permanent set apart once and for all. That stage is the positional sanctification. Your position in, has changed from that of the world to being in Christ. The next stage is where all of us are. Uh, as long as we live on this earth, we are in this stage. Uh, and, and it's called the progressive sanctification. It's the growth ch stage. As long as we live, we, as believers, will be growing. And, and as believers, we, as believers, as we make a determined and disciplined effort to allow the Spirit of God to, to set us apart day by day, it is the Spirit of God that conforms us to the image of God. And, and, and more and more as we yield, more and more as we become. Even though we are in the world, we are we as believers are not to we are to be different from the world. Christianity is not to be added to the world in us, but it is to make us brand new in in, in practice. It is to push out the world in us until only the ways of Christ remains. And, and it's a process that does not happen overnight. It takes time and it takes effort. It takes ups and downs and, and turnarounds. And as we yield to the Holy Spirit and allow him to conform our lives to the image of God, then and only then do we grow. And with that said, I yield to that thing called time. <laughs>
So join us next time as we continue our study of a gospel church that is in Corinth. See you next time. Love you. Goodbye.